Previously, the town had always been populated by hysterics of one sort or another. Following the Escrobius escapade, however, there was a remarkable plague of twilight talk about unnatural repercussions that were either in the making or were already taking place throughout the town. Someone would have to atone for that uncreated existence. Or such was the general feeling, as it was expressed in various obscure settings and situations. In the dead of night, one could hear the most reverberant screams at frequent intervals from every section of town. the usual nocturnal outbursts, and upon subsequent overcast days, the streets were all but deserted. Any talk confronting the specifics of the town's night terrors was either precious or entirely absent. Perhaps I might even say it was as uncreated as Ascorbius himself, at least for time. It was inevitably the figure of Dr. Klatt, who, late one afternoon, stepped forward from the shadows of an old warehouse to address a small group of persons assembled there. His shape, barely visible in the gauzy light that pushed its way through dusty window panes, Klatt announced that he might possess the formula for solving the new-found troubles of the northern border town. While the warehouse gathering was as wary as the rest of us of any further meddling in the matter of Ascorbius, they gave Clatt a hearing in spite of their reservations. Including among this group was a woman known as Mrs. Glim, who operated a lodging house, actually a kind of brothel, and received each eyes for the most part by other towns, especially business travellers to operate some destination across the border. Even though Clatt did not directly address Mrs. Glim, he made it quite clear that he would require an assistant of a very particular type to carry out the measures he had in mind for delivering us all from those intangible traumas that had lately afflicted everyone in some manner. Such an assistant, the doctor emphasized, should not by be anyone who is exceptionally uh, sensitive or intelligent. At the same time, he continued, this person must have a definite handsomeness of appearance, even a fragile beauty. Further instructions from Dr. Klatt indicated that the requisite assistant should be sent up to the hilltop graveyard that same night, for the doctor fully expected that the clouds, which had choked the sky throughout the day, would linger long into the evening, thus cutting off the moonlight that often shone so harshly on the closely huddled graves. This desire for optimum darkness seemed to be a conspicuous giveaway on the doctor's part. Everyone present at the old warehouse was of course aware that such measures as Klatt proposed were only another instant of meddling by someone who was almost certainly an imposter of the worst sort. But we were already so deeply implicated in the Ascorbius escapade and so lacking in any solutions of our own that no one attempted to discourage Mrs. Glim from doing what she could to assist the doctor. 